Hey everyone, it's Greg from Rev. Um, one of the questions that we got a lot this weekend was all about um, queuing, you know, really tight descriptions of how these game pieces are, what their compression, how squishy they were, the weights, consistencies, things like that. So I thought I'd make a quick video to describe some of that. So first of all, this game piece is foam. Um, it's very similar to the foam that's on a like a like a foam soccer ball or volleyball. Um, especially feels like one of those little small stress balls uh, that you have or something like that. It is very, very, very flexible. Like you can completely bend it in half. Um, this does not take much force at all. The good news is that it actually returns to shape pretty well. I mean, it will be distorted just a little bit after you completely abuse it, but this is a pretty good game piece. Uh, it's also molded, uh, which means you're going to have really good shape consistency um, between them. So what I thought I would do is uh, cover a couple of things, um, do some weight, and then I also want to uh, provide some visuals to do some data to actually characterize um, what the compression is. And I'll get to that in just a second. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to weigh a bunch of them. We're going to kind of look at the variance of this. This is one of our really accurate uh, counting scales. We generally count like screws with this, so well within the tolerance of it. So I'm just going to put a couple on and take a look at them. Uh, let me zero this guy. As I said, it's very accurate, so breathing on this is, there we go, nice and zeroed. All right. Um, by the way, this is in ounces, so uh, 0.98 ounces, 1.04 ounces, 1.04, One point oh two. One point oh two. Um, so far, that seems like that's a really, really consistent game piece. One point oh eight. Um, so I mean, this is. I mean, you know, it seems like it. Oh, there's a variance, but you're only talking about a range of 0 0.05 ounces so far, which is really, really good. So the point oh eight, point point one point one ounces. Um, that's these are still really pretty consistent. And I think that part of that has to do with the manufacturing process. The fact that each one of these is molded um, really will play into that. All right, so 1.06. So we've got a kind of good assortment of numbers there. Um, we can compile that into a, a table, um, which we'll put in our docs site. Um, so one of the things that I would normally do if I was a team is spend some time with the caliper checking out you know, the consistency, what the dimensions of these are, um, kind of looking at that. Um, nominally, these are listed in the manual as five inches. And honestly, like when I measure them, I get like 4.94. But because they're so compliant, it's very difficult to get a really accurate measurement. And honestly, I think it doesn't matter for teams. Um, treat them as five inches for your CAD. Know that they are squishy. It's not, you're not going to be in a situation where, you know, that thousandth of an inch uh, matters. Normally when you've got a rigid game piece, you really want to know its, its size and what the variance of it is because you have to build the compliance into your mechanism. But since the compliance is actually going to be in the game piece itself for the most part, you really don't care on the other side. So for your CAD purposes, for your design and prototyping, treat them as five inches of the nominal. You'll be, you'll be good to go. I mean, people are going to be designing conveyors and intakes that do all sorts of squishy things to these. So. That's the first step. Um, the second step, um, what I have over here is I've got um, one of our uh, other shipping scales here. Um, and what I, what I did is I put an engineering ruler on, um, and I zeroed two inches to the top surface, which means that these rings will be about at seven inches to start. And so um, what we're going to do is I'm going to just push down on the ring, and we're going to take a look at the force um, when I push down on the ring. Um, so we're going to do that. All right, so going over here, um, you can see uh, set at zero. This is in pounds. Um, the ring is about at seven inches because it's five inches, two inches off the surface. And I'm just going to push down. So at half an inch, of, it's about two pounds. Down about one inch, it's about, that looks like about three pounds. Um, down two and a half, you've got four pounds. Um, down two inches, it's really tough. You're down at almost five pounds. So that's pretty good. So I'm just going to do this on a couple rings 
um, to check them out. And, um, you know, this is, I guess, what I would call quasi scientific because the rings really want to kind of bend as well as compress. Um, down two inches in the five pound range. Um, sometimes I also think it's going to be important to test the same ring if you want to replicate this experience because they're not exactly guaranteed to be the same. So it's about down an inch, three pounds, five pounds, almost at five and point nine down two inches or so. So I'm just going to keep testing a couple of these and you can kind of get a feel for what their, uh, what it is. So there's like three and a half down an inch. A little more. Five. Once you get past two inches, what happens is, is that it looks like these rings want to kind of do that, and that's not really a great accurate representation. I'm trying to make all the compression straight linear, so we're actually like bending and compressing within this surface. Um, but let's just do a couple more and give you some more some more data here. That's about an inch down an inch and a half. That two inch one is where it gets really tough. So, all right, I'll just do maybe two more. Half an inch, it's about one inch down. It's about two inches down, two and a half. Now all the way down to two inches down. So we'll, we'll collect some of this data and we will uh, we'll post a table with some, some of this. Um, but I think so far these have been pretty consistent. I haven't found any that are really, really soft, um, which is good. So for a shooter game, you really want to kind of do it. So um, that gives, hopefully gives you a little bit of information about how they compress. Um, compression with these is actually really, really important. Because when you're building a shooter, if you're going to build a flywheel shooter, you're going to want to put some compression on it. Because, and the consistency of how much these objects compress plays a big factor on the amount of force that the wheel can impart on the disc in that small amount of time. So consistent game pieces are much easier to build uh, consistent shooters with. Um, if there's lots of variance in you know, how much the game piece compresses, it's much more difficult to build a consistent shooter around it. But so far, these seem pretty good. Uh, one thing I would look out for, um, um, foam, manufacturing with foam, um, sometimes you'll see like a batch to batch difference uh, between um, just, you know, the compressive and foam mixtures. It's a chemical process, right? So there may be a little bit. So depending on your set, your season, there may be a little bit batch to batch, but um, I don't expect much. But if you get to a tournament and you recognize that uh, these are really softer or these are harder, um, it should be as simple as maybe changing just the compression on your shooter itself. So think about that in your design. How am I going to adjust um, the compression? Because you may have to adapt as the season goes on. Um, similarly, um, I know that some, in some previous games with foam objects, mainly in the first robotics competition, if this foam gets chipped away at all, that might change uh, the discs a little bit. So keep an eye on it, but so far what I'm seeing here is a really consistent good game piece. So um, the next thing I want to talk about is the wobble goal. Um, so first, uh, it's a nice nice game piece. You're going to have to lift it up. Um, we'll do a couple weights real quick on this. Um, all right, so we've got the first one. Remember this is in ounces. So that's 14.54 ounces. 14.48, 14 14.5, 14.48. So these are pretty consistent. Um, you know, I think that if you design your mechanism thinking about this as a pound, um, a pound is going to be a good thing. One of the important things just as a think about when you're thinking about lifting it is if you're lifting it from the bottom, you can treat it as dead weight, where it's all the centroid of the weight is all going to be where you're lifting. But if you are going to grab this handle and rotate this thing around or um, do anything except just hold it like this, um, do keep in mind your moment, right? Because, you know, your torque is equal to force times distance. 
and the weight distribution is very heavy towards the bottom. So if you've got an arm and you grab it like this, remember you've got to take into account the length of this arm plus the length of this arm with the force out here. So if you just design this arm to lift a pound right at this point, you might be underweighted um, compared to thinking about this extra weight. So a little bit of uh, physics you have to do there. Um, the only other thing I really wanted to point out about the wobble goals is that um, I saw during our prototyping and then during some of the prototyping that other uh, uh, teams did this first weekend, a lot of teams were going to pick up by this cap, right? There's a very small little lip edge here, and I saw a lot of, you know, this type of hanging on. Um, this cap is a rubber uh, press-on to the tube, and while it's pretty secure on there, it is just a flexible cap. Um, so it's not, there's no rivets, there's no glue. Um, you're just relying on the tension of this rubber and the friction, or that really it's just friction, to hold it on there. So I, it feels pretty sound, but it may be something to take a look at when you start getting these or putting a lot of effort on them is if team after team after team keeps running around the field holding them like this, these caps might get loose um, as the season goes along. I don't think it's going to be an issue, but um, just something to keep an eye on. Um, the rest of these are pretty simple, so um, they look like great game objects, and so uh, I think that's it. If you've got any other questions or specific things you want us to take a look at or things you want to know about your game pieces before you maybe get them in hand, um, just leave a comment uh, on this video or send us a message, and we'll do our best to uh, answer or make another video to give you the information you need to get designing. Thanks. See you later.